This is the Caspian Sea, and this is the Black Sea. And this is where Russia wants to build a new deep water corridor connecting the two, the proposed Eurasia Canal, a nearly 700 kilometer waterway that would cut across southern Russia, big enough for modern cargo ships and ambitious enough to rewrite trade flows for an entire region. If it's ever completed, this canal could become one of the most transformative mega projects of the century, opening a direct maritime route from Central Asia to the world's oceans and bypassing the outdated Soviet-era Volga-Don Canal that currently limits Caspian nations to shallow draft vessels. So today, we're diving into one of the most ambitious, expensive, and honestly boldest infrastructure ideas Russia has pushed in decades, a $20 billion mega canal stretching hundreds of kilometers across southern Russia, connecting the Caspian Sea to the Black Sea, and through that, the Mediterranean. Let's set the stage. Think about the canals that changed the world. The Suez Canal, slicing Africa and Asia apart, turned deserts into a global shipping superhighway. The Panama Canal carved straight through a continent, saving ships literally weeks of travel. These canals didn't just move boats, they moved economies, empires, and entire power structures. And now, Russia wants its own moment in the history books. Picture the Caspian Sea, this massive inland ocean with oil, gas, grain, and enough economic potential to make any global power drool. But it has one giant problem. It's landlocked. You can't just sail from Kazakhstan to the Mediterranean unless you squeeze through the old Volgodon Canal, a Soviet-era waterway built in 1952 when cargo ships were the size of modern fishing boats. And here's the issue. That canal is just 3.5 meters deep. That's nothing. It's like trying to drive a semi-truck down a bike lane. As a result, Caspian countries, Russia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Iran, are forced to rely on complicated routes just to get their goods out to open waters. Sure, pipelines and trains exist, but they're expensive, slow, and politically risky. If your whole economy depends on exports and your only route to the ocean is a rusty, tiny waterway from the 1950s, that's not a good place to be. So in the early 90s, Kazakhstan, newly independent and looking for ways to stand on its own, started thinking big, really big. What if they cut a new canal, a deep water route, an ocean-class corridor, something capable of handling modern cargo ships? For Kazakhstan, this wouldn't just be a canal, it would be independence in concrete form. By the mid-2000s, with Kazakhstan swimming in oil money and China rolling out its massive Belt and Road Initiative, the idea started gaining traction. Kazakhstan pitched the project to Russia. Russia said, interesting. China said, potentially very interesting. And suddenly, a dream turned into a strategic possibility. Fast forward to today, and here's the vision a roughly 700-kilometer waterway known as the Eurasia Canal, carved through southern Russia along a natural lowland corridor called the kuma Manik Depression. Depth, around 6.5 to 7 meters, wide enough for 10,000 to 15,000 ton cargo vessels, triple what the old Soviet canal can handle. This thing would be a completely different Lee. If it ever comes to life, the canal could move up to 100 million tons of cargo every single year. That's enough to put it among the biggest and busiest waterways on Earth. And suddenly, ports like Aktau, Astrakhan, and Turkmenbashi would become major players in global trade. Ships could sail from the Caspian through Russia, into the Black Sea, past Turkey, and straight into the Mediterranean and beyond. Just imagine, oil, gas, grain, steel, all flowing directly from the heart of Eurasia to Europe, the Middle East, Africa, global markets, no bottleneck, no Soviet-era restrictions, no depending on neighbors with different political agendas. That's huge. And the design isn't some cheap cut-and-dig water ditch. We're talking modern locks like the ones used in the Panama Canal expansion, smart sensors to track ships, automated traffic systems, dual-lane navigation so vessels don't get stuck behind each other like it's rush hour, reservoirs to manage water levels, artificial fish passages, ecological safeguards. It's like taking the best pieces of every major canal on Earth and trying to mash them into one mega project. But here's where things get wild. Building this isn't like digging a swimming pool. This is one of the biggest engineering challenges Eurasia has ever seen.
because while southern Russia is mostly flat, it's not simple. It's full of grasslands, semi-arid stretches, rivers, unstable soils, and huge environmental sensitivities. And there's the biggest issue of all, water. The Caspian Sea sits below sea level. The Black Sea is at sea level. If you connect them, you have to constantly manage water flow. Too much and you flood things. Too little and your canal becomes a massive muddy ditch. So you need giant pumps. You need locks that raise and lower ships like elevators. You need to make sure drawing water from rivers doesn't ruin ecosystems or drain wetlands. Then there's soil stability. Parts of the region have salinization issues. Basically, the earth can crumble or erode if you don't engineer it properly. So the canal banks need reinforcing with modern materials like geotextiles. Think of them like giant industrial fabrics that keep dirt in place when water wants to rip it apart. You're also talking about bridges, tunnels, service roads, power lines, pumping stations. This isn't just a canal. It's an entire linear city of infrastructure stretching hundreds of kilometers. Construction would require tens of thousands of workers over a decade or more. The cost? Well, over $20 billion is the conservative estimate. Realistically, you're probably looking at $30 to $40 billion by the time the final bill arrives. So who pays for it? Russia? Maybe. But Russia today isn't exactly swimming in spare cash. Kazakhstan wants it badly, but it doesn't have that kind of financial firepower. And that opens the door to China, the one country with the money, the interest, and the strategic motivation to say, let's do this. And honestly, China has already built crazier things. They've built entire highways over oceans. They've built railways through deserts. They've built ports in countries nobody even thought about. For China, a water corridor that strengthens their belt and road network? That's not just attractive, that's textbook. Chinese banks could fund it. Chinese construction giants could build it. And China could lock in long-term influence over one of the most important new trade routes on Earth. But here's where geopolitics starts throwing punches. Iran and Azerbaijan aren't thrilled. They worry this canal makes Russia even more dominant in the Caspian. Turkey isn't thrilled either. After all, any ship moving from this new canal still has to pass through the Bosporus and Dardanelles, straits that Turkey controls. So Turkey keeps leverage. Then you've got Europe. Some countries look at this and think, hmm, new trade routes. Others think, great, more dependence on Russia. And of course, global sanctions muddy the waters even more. Even if everyone agreed, critics still argue the economics don't fully add up. The Suez and Panama canals thrive because global shipping depends on them. They serve the entire world. The Caspian region? Its exports are valuable, but limited, mostly oil, gas, grain, and metals. The question is, would there really be enough traffic to repay a $20 billion plus construction bill? And then come the environmental concerns, altering rivers, building dams, pumping water, disrupting fragile ecosystems. Local communities rely on fisheries and wetlands that could change dramatically if even small mistakes are made. Soil salinization could ruin farmland. Desertification could spread. The region is sensitive, mess with it too much, and the damage might be irreversible. Yet, despite all of that, the potential payoff is huge. For Kazakhstan, it's a lifeline out of landlocked dependency. For Russia, it's a chance to modernize infrastructure and cash in on new trade flows. For China, it's another Belt and Road artery. For Central Asia overall, it's a chance to step onto the global stage in a new way. But here's the honest truth. As of 2025, not a single shovel has hit the ground. The project is still in the studies and feasibility stage. Governments talk about it. Committees meet about it. Experts debate it. But real construction? Not yet. If the stars align, and that's a giant if, this thing might be finished sometime between the late 2030s and 2040s. By then, global trade could look completely different. Energy markets could shift. Climate change could reshape coastlines. Political alliances could flip. So the big question is whether this canal becomes a historic triumph or a $20 billion dream that never leaves the blueprint stage. But imagine if they do build it. Imagine standing on the bank of a brand new waterway that cuts across an entire country, the way people must have felt when they saw the Panama Canal or the Suez Canal for the first time. 
Imagine watching huge cargo ships glide across what used to be grassland. Imagine the economic zones, the new ports, the jobs, the logistics hubs rising up along the banks. A completely new trade route, born out of ambition, geopolitics, and a bit of desperation, suddenly becomes real. So what do you think? Is Russia and Kazakhstan's Eurasia Canal the next Suez or Panama, a defining mega project of the modern era? Or is it destined to remain a bold idea that politicians love to talk about but never actually build? Let me know in the comments. Seriously, this one deserves a debate. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into one of the world's most ambitious engineering dreams, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps the channel more than you know and lets me keep making videos just like this.